It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Therott, Mary Jo Foley are here. They're going to take a look, their predictions for 2019, and I'm going to do them a favor. I'm going to bring back their predictions from last year to see how they did in 2018. That's all coming up next on Windows Weekly. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therod and Mary Jo Foley. Episode 602 for Wednesday, January 2nd, 2019. Squeeze it till it squeaks. Windows Weekly is brought to you by LastPass. Make password management a priority in 2019. Secure every password-protected entry point to your business and reduce the threat of breach at lastpass.com slash twit. And by WordPress. Turn your dreams into reality and launch your website at wordpress.com. Plans start at just $4 a month. Get 15% off any new plan purchase at wordpress.com slash windows. It's time for Windows Weekly. Wait a minute, are we recording? Yes, we are. Shoot. It, <laughs> that's that's the, the they're back, ladies and gentlemen. They're back from vacation. Mary Jo Foley, uh, smelling strangely of garam masala. She's from yes. all about Microsoft.com, ZDNet. Hello. She cooked uh, Indian all week. I mm. did. Nice. What was your favorite dish of the week? I think um, palak paneer Ooh. was my favorite. You made paneer. You know, paneer. That's the fresh I'm, cheese. Yeah. Wow. It's not for the faint of heart to it make it, but I made it. <laughs> Requires I think the most adventurous Indian food we make is butter chicken. I love butter chicken, but that's I think yeah. made up. I don't think that's actually Indian. <laughs> that's what I mean. That's what I mean. It's, it's, it's kind of on the Americanized yeah. uh, menu. I've made tikka masala. That's good. Yeah, I like mm -hmm. chicken tikka masala. Or, you know what we get uh, for people like you, Mary Jo, uh, tofu curls. <laughs> you. Have you ever had for tofu you curls? No. They're what hard. are they? Like cheese curds? No, they're hard, and they come in a bag. Andy Yanako told me about them. And you soak them, and then they turn yeah. soft. And it's actually about the texture of chicken. It's perfect for that kind of Ooh. stewy dish. Hmm. Welcome once again. Yep. <laughs> Culinary <laughs> Weekly. Good job, Weekly. <laughs> also here, Therat.com's Paul Therat. He's the major domo <laughs> at Therat.com. And yep. in charge of all of this as well. Hello, Paul. Hello, Mary Jo. Hello, Leo. It's a brand new year, a brand new one-note notebook. Yeah. Exciting. Did you play a lot of Call Excellent. of Duty uh, during the break, Paul? Uh, I did when I was home. We went to Boston for a few days. Oh, that's right. Uh, yeah. we, had, we had friends out over the New Year's holiday, but... Oh, yeah, nice. I prestiged, you know, the usual stuff. I prestiged. <laughs> I prestiged. I got to level 36 in uh, Pokemon Go. Does that count? <laughs> Probably. Nah. Right. <clears throat> so, you two, as is your wad, have made lists for the new year. Mm -hmm. Predictions for Microsoft. Who wants to start? We can alternate, and Mary Jo we should could. probably go first. All right. <clears throat> okay. Mary Jo, the pride of place goes to you. Um, so I think if I'm looking all up at Microsoft for this coming year, the thing I have to remember every time I write a story is they are obsessed with Chromebooks and Chrome OS, whether they ever say that or not. And <laughs> I think like they don't yeah, they, no, like if you true. ask them about it, if you say, do you guys care about Chromebooks? They're like, oh, you know what? They're, we don't really ever see that in competition. They are obsessed with it and they should be. Right. I mean, I think they're yep. the only company that made an anti Chromebook ad ever. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. With the palm. I mean, but stars, if you look, I at, wouldn't buy that for a million dollars. Right. But if you if you look at what what's do where does Windows fit anymore in their equation? It's on the desktop, and it's in devices like slates and tablets, and that's their main competition. There is Chrome, and I think. They don't want to say we're really worried about Chromebooks. We're, we're scared of how they're penetrating, not just in education, but in other markets that are key to us. But this yep. this is driving them. And la our, in our last episode, when Chris Capasella talked about his hidden gems, remember one of them was Surface Go. And they definitely see that as a Chromebook competitor. And there's a reason he called that out. Hmm. He never mentioned Chromebooks, but... Mm. <laughs> 
He was That's interesting. You know, I um, I had Windows 10 Lean as one of my items, and and this is the coming Chromebook or uh, Chrome OS competitor. Yeah. But one thing I did over, I guess it would have been last weekend, was I went through the thousands of articles we published last year and tried to establish some of the key themes, you know, mm -hmm. from 2018. And and originally, I haven't published a bunch of it because originally some of the big stuff from last year was obviously like the Intel Spectre and Meltdown stuff and whatever. But mm -hmm. I had so many Microsoft mm -hmm. stories and then so many Windows 10 specific stories that I kind of just did a top 10 for that. And then I'll see if I'll get to any of this other stuff. But the one thing that just missed the list, it was basically number 11, was Microsoft's continued education push. And mm -hmm. you actually saw this throughout last year in a variety of ways. There's the big uh, uh, education show at the beginning of the year. Called, I think it's called BET. Yeah, BET. Mm -hmm. um, and you can expect a bunch of stuff from Microsoft around that. But there were other initiatives last year related to education. And I think, um, not that they didn't always have an education um, strategy of some kind, but mm -hmm. if we go back a little bit further to May of 2017, when they announced Surface Laptop and <clears throat> kind of formally said, look, this is how we're going to deal with Chrome uh, in education. Um, they've had some, they've had some pretty good successes since then. Mm -hmm. um, and, but you're well, right. You know, they don't, you know who's <laughs> in charge, right, of Windows and education? I feel like I should know that. You should. Uh, I bet I'm going to, yeah, when you say it, I'll Is it probably, Mavis Beacon? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Does last name does begin with the B though? Jill Belfiore. No, really? Oh no, that's not what I. Uh, okay, Joe Belfiore. Yeah. What, why? Yeah, <laughs> that's not what I was like, thinking at all. Because he's you, got beetle hair. That's why. <laughs> the kids love him for his long hair. Sure. No, that's what you know. He wears a lot of hats at Microsoft, and he, his title is something like Windows Corporate VP. But one of the main areas he's in charge of is education. Wow, oh, I didn't know that. Fascinating. Yep. Okay. Well, we should be hearing from Joe and company soon. Um, and we'll see. You know, they, they don't usually call out Chromebook explicitly, which I find kind of interesting, other than to say, you know, Windows 10 and education grew this much and it's more than Chrome did. And, you know, just to kind of make that comparison. But, um, yeah, I think the education thing is going to be a, a big story this year hmm. for sure. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. That, they used to dominate education, right? And that's the thing. Is they well, they still do, but they've lost a lot of ground. To, well, they, or they still compete. It depends on the market. It depends on the country. Um, Chromebook kind of came up think, out of nowhere. Yeah, I don't think they actually dominate anywhere worldwide. Oh, uh, maybe anymore. worldwide. Maybe outside the U.S. Um, or outside North America they do, but Chromebooks yeah. are just like killing it. Yeah, and it's I not mean, just the United States. This is one thing a lot of people, you know, People fall to suck, uh, kind of succumb to this notion of if I don't see it, it's not happening, um, which I take great exception to. But um, uh, Chromebooks are huge in education in the United States. They're also huge in education in certain countries in Western Europe and also in Australia and New Zealand. And it's it's one of those snowball things. Like it's mm -hmm. it's uh, <clears throat> it's real, and and the benefits of the platform are real. So this is something Microsoft has to address. It's not just perception. It's you know these these things actually work. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking at numbers now. Um, K through 12 in the U.S., Chromebooks and Chrome OS dominate. Windows uh, in the rest of the world, but um, um, Well, Android, dominate what? Like, I mean, new device sales or? Uh, mobile computing shipments. Established. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, uh, that's what I mean. So, uh, it's highly likely that most <laughs> education-based PCs in the United States are actually still Windows PCs. It's just that over the past... Yeah. Three, four yeah. years, whatever it's been. Shipments of Chromebooks have exploded. And uh, that's the thing Microsoft's trying. You know, they want to stem yeah. that tide before it gets, you know, before it's too late. Yeah. Huh. Chromebooks, number one in Mary Jo's list. Yep. Paul? <laughs> Well, I mean, I just did the, th my, the, my addition to that was just my thing about Windows used 10 lean, up. which I, used it up. which I think, well, it, it, it complements what she was doing. So okay, I think yeah. next, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm just teasing. Um, what, by the way, is it lean or light? What is it? I know. Right. Yeah. So I don't, well, the, right. the it, latest code name is light, L-I-T-E. Is that because but, that's what we found in the code or didn't? Yeah. I think it was in yeah, a I list. Showed up in like a set, uh, Windows 10 setup thing, yeah. Yep. But it could be lean. 
It could be something well, else entirely. Yeah, it, it sounds like a diet Windows. version of Windows. I don't, I don't. Yeah. Well, there was something called Windows 10 Lean. Um, but then for a while, we thought we knew what that was. We thought it was a version of Windows 10 that worked on um, storage constrained devices. But maybe that oh, wasn't what that was. That would make sense. Lean because it's less heavy, right? They either, never would either that acknowledge or it's Windows it. for women lean in version. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a bad idea. I'm just gonna that would, yeah, especially with what's going on. I, that wouldn't be. I'm a good gonna idea. put that out there right now that that's not a, that's a non-starter. No. Yeah. No. Um, lean. So it would be yeah because that's one problem people have. I don't know if this is still a problem, but for a while when people bought those eight gigabyte tablets, they couldn't upgrade because yeah. there wasn't enough. The Windows is too heavy. So yeah. maybe Windows on a yeah. diet. I just don't. I I still. You know, with all these new platforms, you know, Microsoft stuff, you, the, whether they're real or imagined, you know, you always come back to the same thing, which is, yeah, but what about the apps? You know, where are the apps? Mm -hmm. And, yeah. um, <coughs> you know, a Windows 10 lean or light or whatever it is that's sort of a Chromebook competitor, you're going to be running web apps and then whatever handful of compatible store apps there are, it, it's it's still a problem, you know, and I, and I don't quite, I still don't quite understand how this solves the problem. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. For Microsoft, so it's not the it's not the Chromebook killer version of Windows. Well, I'm sure it's thought of as that. <laughs> I just don't yeah. think it's going. But another item on your list might be, but I won't tip your hand. <laughs> I'm just giving you an opportunity if you want to throw another one in. But let's go back to Mary Jo okay. for her item number two. Um, so this is kind of related to the Chromebook thing. Um, Microsoft's going to, you're going to hear a term you're going to hear a lot this year is first line workers from them. And I've been, I've been looking through some of those speeches that various executives gave at the end of last year. And this came up all the time. It was like first line workers. Yep. We're going after first line workers. There's 3 billion to 5 billion first line workers that don't have the computing devices that they need. And this is where we see the next big market for us. So if you if you put all the pieces together, you can see why they're doing this. Uh, you know, the market for office is pretty much saturated. If you look at people, who, as what they call, who work in carpeted offices. But people who don't work in carpeted offices, meaning people who are out in the front lines, fast food, healthcare, retail, they don't have office. So Microsoft's saying, you know what, we've pretty much saturated the market that we know. But there's these three to five billion other people who we see as an untapped market, and these are the first-line workers. So I think everything they do around Office 365, I wouldn't say everything, many things they're going to do around Office 365, Microsoft 365, even devices like the Go, um, their target market is first-line workers. So you have to always have those glasses on when you're analyzing their strategy because this is what they're looking at as the next big place where they can focus their productivity software and services and get them to new customers who are not currently Microsoft customers. Hmm. That's not the same as the Chromebook, though. That's No, but you know, um, I think if you look at where is the opportunity with Chromebooks, so education is the one that comes immediately to mind, but first-line workers is another one you could say is a potential market for Chromebooks. Yeah, yeah just or tablets generally as well. Or tablets, sure. though, more, right? right? Or tablets, yeah. I what? mean, tablets, um, a lot of first-line workers may need a keyboard oh. or they may need, may need something at least sometimes they can use with a keyboard. Right. It's interesting. This is all, pre I presume, a market research-based, right? They've they've looked yeah. out there and they've seen where the <clears throat> markets are and they say, this is the soft spot. Yeah. If, you, if people who are still working right before Christmas, this story kind of slipped in under the radar, but they did, they paid Forrester Research or did a study with Forrester Research that talked about the untapped market for first-line workers. And they did a whole big like study, blog post, a whole, I think there was a Microsoft story around it. This is something that's going to be really big this year for them. Interesting. Hmm. Paul? Well, let's see. I guess I'll jump around a little bit. Um, <laughs> uh, related to the, one of the big things for me, and, and the, one of the things that did make my top 10 list was this notion of Windows 10 on ARM and when or if it will ever make sense um, compared to using an Intel compatible Is this uh, the year for Windows 10 on ARM? 
Yeah. And, you know, we'll see. <laughs> uh, you know, there are two problems for Qualcomm and for the platform, uh, one of which it looks like they're going to address with the 8CX chipset, which is performance. And then the other one, which is going to require a lot more work on the part of various partners, especially app developers, which is compatibility. And so I talk a lot about Photoshop Elements as an obvious example, but it's one thing that I run into. But what I found on the second generation Qualcomm chipset is that performance is still a little slow. And the sticking point is this compatibility thing. Um, they're going to address the biggest compatibility issue by bringing web browsers in native form. Uh, to the platform like Chromium and Firefox, which is excellent. And obviously Microsoft Edge, the new version, will be ported over as well. But it's, you know, the, the problem for this thing, which has been a problem for a lot of these um, kind of side versions of Windows 10, is that there's this gotcha moment. You know, you've got this thing that looks and works like Windows. It is Windows to you. It is Windows. And then you go to install something and it doesn't work. And it could be something you downloaded from the web. It could be a driver for your printer or, you know, scanner or whatever it might be. And it, it's it's kind of a terrible thing to do to people because in this case, for the most part, everything kind of works normally. And you might think you're fine and it, two weeks goes by or whatever it is. And then suddenly <clears throat> you, you hit that moment. And they this is something that they need to get by. And uh, actually, a lot of my predictions are more questions than predictions. I don't actually, I'm not prepared to predict that they will solve these problems. I, I, I think they I think they will solve the performance stuff, but the compatibility thing is still a big open question. Yeah, although it goes hand in hand. I mean, yeah, I mean, well, you know, everyone has different priorities um, mm -hmm. and different needs and so forth. And I suppose for some people, the you know the epic battery life and all that kind of stuff will outweigh the other stuff. And 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 honestly, today there's only one of these things in the world right now. But if you bought a Snapdragon 850 compatible computer, um, who makes that could, one? Uh, so, Lenovo does. Okay. You could probably live with the performance, unless you know, obviously, you know, I don't know if you've read videos or play video games or whatever. But you know, for day to day stuff, it's 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 like pretty much right there. But it's just it's this gotcha thing with compatibility that I think is going to be a continued problem. Mm. Unless you're a first line worker. Well, yeah, I mean, actually, so in that in that <clears throat> case, you're either running it in kiosk mode or it's mm -hmm. some kind of a lockdown device where they've specifically enabled just the apps that you need. So they, they know going into that, the workplace does that this thing's going to work for you. In fact, it might be advantageous for it not to be right. overly compatible with stuff because they don't want you screwing around. Right. Right. True. The device. <laughs> Kind of the rationale behind a Chromebook too, right? Yeah, yeah. It's not yep. as attractive mm -hmm. to people who want to play Minecraft or something. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Mary but then jo the latter half of latter half of neck of twenty nineteen is when we see the really truly full powered ARM devices, yeah. right? Yep. So yeah, then so, that gets more interesting. Right, and we we only know of one other eight fifty based device that's coming to market from Samsung. And I don't know, CES is next week. Maybe there'll be announcements. Uh, but according to Qualcomm, uh, these two chipsets will will exist in the market together. And that kind of makes sense. You know, you can have lower end devices that are less expensive on the older one and so forth. So it's an open question. You know, HCX will see if hmm. the performance thing is real. <laughs> I think it's going to be better, you know, but we don't know for sure. Okay. Yep. All right, Joe, what's yours? Uh, so if you remember the Chris Capicella episode, I asked him about Microsoft 365 Consumer. I knew he wasn't going to answer, but I had to throw that out there because that's going to be a big launch for them in 2019, my sources say. Hmm. Um, we don't know what it's actually going to be in this bundle yet. Regular old Microsoft 365 is Windows 10 Enterprise, Office 365, and uh, Enterprise Mobility and Security. But we don't know what's going to be in the Consumer Bundle. We don't know if there'll be a version of Windows that'll be upgradable to something else. We don't know if um, Skype is going to be in there. I would guess it would be. Probably Cortana, probably Bing in some way. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see what they put in this bundle and who the target audience is. My guess on the target audience is it's prosumers. It's not going to be consumers. It's going to be people who want to get things done. Productivity software matters to them. I'm assuming... Some variant of Office 365 is in there. But whatever whatever they end up putting into this bundle, 
This is their whole idea of we can't let consumers completely go. We can't just be an enterprise focused company. And we think a subscription bundle is a way to attack that market. So I'm, I'm going to be really intrigued when and how they launch yeah. that product and how the reception is for that product. I remember yeah. when they launched Office 365 Home and, cons and uh, Personal, a lot of people said, no consumers are ever going to buy that. Who wants to subscribe to Office? It's been pretty successful. Both both of the yeah. variants have been successful for them. So I'm, well, the I'm reason, curious if they'll be gaming in there too. I, don't, I, I that's think the thing, maybe. Right. Yeah. The reason Office 365 uh, for consumers is so successful is because it's so essential. It's a great deal, you know. Mm -hmm. And you still mm -hmm. hear from people occasionally who will say something along the lines of, why would I pay $99 a year for this thing when I can just buy yeah. one and use it as long as I want? And the, there are answers to that. And the answers include such things as the fact that this thing is updated every single month with major new features like mm -hmm. across the board, that it works with five different people across any number of machines you care to use, that you get yeah. one terabyte of one drive storage. It kind of goes on and on. It's like, it's a no-brainer. And so I think the, the trick for Microsoft 365 is to be the same kind of no-brainer. And to me... And I, there's no indication that this is where they're headed with it, but it is that thing that you just suggested. It has to. It should be all Microsoft, and it should that should include Xbox. It should be the yeah. way to get all of the stuff <clears throat> that Microsoft has to offer, including Xbox Live Gold and Game Pass, Office 365. You know, on an mm -hmm. annual basis. And I'm curious, mostly what it will be, and how Thank they you. position it. It's not going to replace Office 365. I would imagine it will be essentially like a higher skew, you know, a, mm -hmm. uh, an upgrade. And will they offer people who have home subscriptions a way to upgrade to Microsoft 365? Right. Which is something you, you can do today on the commercial side. Yeah, I, I know it sounds like kind of an incremental product probably to many people who watch yeah. and listen to this show. But believe me, it's this is a big deal for them because... They're, they're always looking for what, how can we bundle things together? It's been successful for us in the past. How can we sell things as a subscription because everything's going towards the cloud and a cloud revenue model? So I, I really think this is going to be big. I'm just super curious well, you know, what goes in there. <laughs> it's, it's a good point because if you think about it, Microsoft, not that Microsoft invented the office productivity suite per se, right. but they did turn it into a smash success. And I'm sure if we were to go back in time to the early 90s, you would find people saying, why would I buy all of Office? I only need the word processor, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. And the way you make that thing a no-brainer is that the all-up suite is not that much more expensive. You know, you're not paying five times the cost of one of the apps. You're paying right. maybe two times or whatever it is. And so the value proposition has changed slightly because we're subscribing now, essentially. So we're not really buying it outright. But it's, it, we're really having the same conversation, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and again, it, it, Office was kind of a no-brainer for that day. Uh, Office 365, I think, is today. And the trick here is going to be, how do, they, how do you do that for Microsoft 365? Yep. You couldn't trick Chris Cap into telling us a thing. <laughs> is it un it's unannounced or it's it's been announced? But It's cagey. Uh, so I found a couple job postings mentioning ah, okay. it. Okay. And I know it exists, and I've heard it's next year, uh, this coming year, right. um, that they are going to be launching it. But he, he no, he, he was funny. He goes, oh, you know, well, if there was a product like that, blah. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't tell you anything. I but can't really tell yeah, you. Yeah. yeah. Paul, you're next. To me, there were two really big news stories from last year, and again, I focus mostly on the client and Windows. And uh, both of them have big ramifications for this coming year, for this year, I guess. Um, and the, the lesser of the two, in a way, is the Microsoft Edge news that happened right at the end of the year. But it's, it's kind of an interesting big open question for 2019 because we don't know what form it will take. We don't know how successful it will be as far as, you know, using that back end inside of their own browser. Um, we don't know what form it will take visually or from a, like a feature standpoint. Will it just look like Edge and you know work the same way for people who do like Edge? And we also don't know exactly when it's going to happen. We know that uh, we should be testing pre-release versions of it sometime soon. Um, I don't think it's. I don't think there's any way it could possibly sh ship in the first version of Windows 10 that's coming out this year. 
uh, there's a small chance you could ship in, what, what are we going to call it, 19H2 or whatever, um, hmm. maybe. But I could see it going past there as well. And that's a problem too, right? I mean, one of the issues with Edge today, one of the many issues, is the glacial development uh, schedule. So what do you? What happens to the product when they basically take a year off? You know, um, you know what they could they could launch it as a beta and throw it into 19H1. They could just say you think so? it's really early code. If you want to run it side it. by side, yeah, yeah, they could. Yeah, I agree with you. A, they can't wait. They can't wait a year, right? Because one of the platforms yeah. they're going to support is Windows Seven, and the support for Windows Seven expires in 2020. So that's right. They, exactly. They can't take a year off, right? Yep. So, you know, whenever that first pre-release version happens, yeah, that's going to be a pretty good indication of where they're at, right? Because if it's yep. super buggy and weird and half complete, that's a bad sign. Yeah, so mm. we'll see. I wonder if they'll launch it simultaneously on all those platforms they talked about. Right. Like, will Windows 7 and 8.1 launch at the same time as the version for Windows 10? Or will 10 be first? Or will those other two be first? And will right. they be more like... Sure. You know, the way they put Edge on iOS and Android is they they just use the rendering engine that are in both of those platforms, right? And mm -hmm. so it's more like almost a UI app bolted on top of the rendering engine. Yeah, yeah. If, or a front right. end of some kind. Yeah. Yeah, the, and, and since it's a web download, if you were to install it on Windows 10, it, would it overwrite the version of Edge that comes in the operating mm -hmm. system? Right. We don't know. We, we honestly <laughs> have no idea. There's a lot of questions. Yeah. It's probably an update that replaces the engine. I mean, right? Just well, I mean, everything. I, they are going to support uh, the um, the Edge HTML engine is not going out of Windows 10 in the short term, if ever, really. Oh. Um, so it's possible you could run the old and the new version side by side, and I could see the reason yeah. for doing that. It's just like, why did they offer the old, you know, IE 11 or whatever right. it is, side by side with Edge in Windows 10? Well, because some people Windows use never that breaks immediately. anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And you know, uh, we 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 joke about the market share of Edge. I think it's below 4% of all mm -hmm. uh browsers on Windows now or something like that. But 4% of users on Windows is still a lot of people. You can't just say, "Okay, guys, well, that's that." You know, <laughs> I mean, they have to have a, a support plan yeah. for people who are building well, on the top other, of Edge I mean, and using it. The the way they handled the web browser thing in Windows 10 <laughs> was always wrong. And one of the main yeah. reasons it was wrong is because it abandoned the several hundred million people who aren't on that system and won't be for years to come. And so they've been uh, they've been advancing the browser twice a year, but yeah. not for anyone else, you know. So if you're right. a Windows 7 or 8 user, you've been pretty much, you know, shown the door by Microsoft. And, of course, yeah. you're going to go to Chrome or Firefox or whatever you may choose. Um that was a really that was a big tactical mistake. That was um, putting that browser on the older operating systems would have made the transition mm -hmm. to Windows 10 easier, frankly, uh, for those customers. Yep. It's 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 just a that was just a big mistake. Mm. I bet it was impossibly hard though for them to figure out how to do it, right? <laughs> well, what they should have done is done what they're doing now, which is make it a should, standalone yeah. application. Yeah, right. Was, they should have made just, it an app. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. Yeah, it could have come pre-bundled with Windows 10, but you still go to the web if you mm -hmm. want and download it and get the latest version. Yeah. Yeah, it was just a bad mistake. Well, like like many things they've done with kind of ostracizing Windows 7, I always felt like, you know, if you want people to upgrade, you should dangle more carrots and have fewer sticks. Instead, it's if right. you, like you said, you're a Windows 7 user and you're like, well, I can't use Edge. Oh, well, I guess I'm not going to use Edge. There's kind of a, a, an aesthetic quality to Edge that I like, and it's kind of a hard thing to explain. But I, one of the things I did over the weekend, I'm just going to bring this up so I can see what it looks like, is I brought up um, uh, the 19H1 finally on this computer. Mm. And, it, and, and the fit and finish thing is kind of nice, but one of the things you see across a lot of apps is like a lot of the typography has been kind of standardized and apps look more like each other and so mm -hmm. forth. And, and this style... I don't want to say it originated with Microsoft Edge, but because it was one of the first kind of new big applications in Windows 10, it just has that kind of look and feel. Mm -hmm. And maybe it would look a little goofy in Windows 7 where there's glass and, you know, it's a little different. But it, it, there are going to be people who see that and say, wow, this is, I really like the aesthetic nature of this. So, you know, they wouldn't maybe say it that way, but, you know, I like the way this thing <laughs> looks or whatever. Um, 
<laughs> Sorry, I, just, I love the fluent mind. stuff. It's amazing. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I, I'm trying to think of the phrase. I used some total nerdy industry phrase in front of my wife, and she actually called me on it. But it was anyway. <laughs> Honey, it's my job. As she should have. Yes. Oh no! I, I, I said something like I said I call, I referred to something as the delta between whatever, and she said, "What did you just say?" <laughs> and I said, "Delta," and she said, "Is that a computer thing?" I'm like, "Yep." She goes, "Yeah, don't ever say that again." <laughs> Next time, say, "No, it's an aerospace thing." <laughs> yeah, you exactly. just wouldn't understand. <laughs> yeah. Anywho, um, I anyway, uh, Microsoft's mistakes are legion, but this was, yeah, this was a, really this physics, was a, Paul. You can give credit to physics. <laughs> Say no, I've been studying <laughs> physics in my spare time. <laughs> right. Let's take a, a little time out, and we'll get to more of your lists, your predictions for 2019. Which good news, nobody's writing down, so you don't have to justify them. Twenty twenty. Yeah. Oh, Let's look back. Be surprised, Leo. Um, <laughs> you know, Paul. In January of twenty nineteen. So, by the way, did I tell you the story? Sorry, real quick. This, this is totally, totally pertinent to this. When we were at, at, at Ignite, uh, we had finished one of the live the live show we did on the stage there, right? We go off the stage. There's a couple of people sitting there waiting. We're just you know talking to people and shaking hands, or whatever. And this guy says, uh, "I don't know even know how this came up, but he says, you know, you said <laughs> that Google start. would never buy YouTube." What? And I was like, what? When did you say that? I'm like, what, I'm like, what are you talking about? 1974? And it, and it, and it, I, I'm like, I said, I don't remember. First of all, th when did that even happen? 15 years ago? I'm like, I, a, I don't remember that. I don't, I can't imagine why I would have had an opinion on this or why I would have thought that. I don't even know, but okay. And I sort of, it actually stuck with me, like bothered me. So I looked it up. And if you look this up, I, we had a conversation about this on Windows Weekly, whatever year that was. Yeah. That wow. Google eventually bought YouTube. Wow! And I, I did say at the time I didn't think Google would buy YouTube, and and I, I don't remember this, but man, they they'll hold your feet to the fire. Yeah. You, God forbid, anything comes out of your mouth. You know, it's like they, you know, just waiting for you to throw it. You're just <laughs> you well, know? as it happens, it's, I'm holding in my hands your predictions from last year. Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> So, well, look at the time. <laughs> yeah. But meanwhile, but first, yeah. a word from our sponsor and then more predictions from last year and this year. Our show today brought to you by LastPass. I have a prediction. If you're not using LastPass, you'll be hacked this year. Oh, man. And it's a nasty thing. Uh, where uh, There's different ways you can get hacked. Of course, there's breaches, which means it's not even your fault. You know, somebody broke into, you know, Target and all of a sudden all your information's out there. And then there's people just, you know, guessing your password. Um, I think obviously that's a less likely scenario, much more likely your password that you used on 20 different sites got leaked in a breach and now all 20 sites have been compromised, that kind of thing. Now, on the other hand, if you're a business like, I don't know, Target, Experian, or I'm sorry, Equifax or, you know, Marriott, it, you behoove, it would behoove you to take a little extra precautions with your passwords and logins. After all, your employees have the keys to the kingdom in their heads. Your passwords, your logins to your database, your website, your bank accounts, your books, all of that. Make password management a priority this year. Windows Weekly is brought to you by LastPass. From Time Hop to My Heritage and My Fitness Pal, what do these three have in common? Data breaches affecting millions of people around the world. You got to protect your business with LastPass Enterprise. It makes password sharing easy for your employees because, you know, they just click a box and share it. They don't actually have to even know the password to share it, and the person who gets it doesn't get to know it necessarily. Access to corporate data is secure. You have complete oversight centralized admin so that means you can do things as we do we use it here set master password requirements they have to be a certain length they have to be a certain randomness you can enable password resets you can require two-factor which we also do restrict access when needed employee leaves they get they lose access to everything you get over a hundred policies plus actionable security reports I like the shared folders feature. That's a great way to add somebody to a, you know, you get a new employee and that person's working in the business office. They get shared to the passwords, you know, the, the, the accounts that are business related. That's in the business folder. 
They don't get the passwords. They just get the access to those accounts. It's awesome. We put everything in there. I, database logins. I keep my SSH keys in there. Yes, the, the public and the private keys. Software licenses. I keep my my personal LastPass has my passport, my driver's license, social security numbers, all the business information. In business, every employee has their own secure vault for managing and accessing their passwords. In fact, we give all our employees a personal version of LastPass that they can merge in. They, they're, they're discreet, so you don't, you know, nobody else gets access to them, but you only have to log in once and you get both your business and your personal passwords. That kind of encourages them to use it, gets them used to it. We think that's really important. There's a password generator, so you generate unique random passwords, and you don't have to remember them, you don't have to write them down, and you don't reuse them. They're unique to each password. That makes it so easy. The autofill functionality on iOS 12, on Android, makes it it's the first thing I install on any new computer is LastPass, because from then, it's easy to set everything else up. Multi-factor, as I mentioned, really important. LastPass has... A variety of MFA options, the, even the you know, LastPass Authenticator app, which is great because it's not a six-digit number. It just says approve or deny on your phone. You say yes, bing. The se second layer of authentication helps ensure unauthorized users won't gain access. Employees can also log in to uh, LastPass with your Microsoft Active Directory credentials, which is really nice if you're an AD house because then you don't have to have an extra password. It's all done once. LastPass is built on zero knowledge. That means data is encrypted and decrypted only on the device. LastPass doesn't have access to any data at all. It's secret. We love it. They've got, of course, a solution for teams of 50 or fewer. Enterprise, what's what we use for the bigger companies. LastPass Premium for your personal use. LastPass Families for the entire family. Look at 43,000 businesses from leading tech brands like MailChimp to Fortune 500 companies trust LastPass. It's the number one most preferred password manager. We use it. You should use it too. Find the best password solution for your team at lastpass.com slash twit. We're big fans. Lastpass.com slash twit. And uh, always glad to tell people, even if it's not an ad, get LastPass and use it. That's the source of real security. Back to Windows Weekly, Paul Therott and Mary Jo Foley. Do you want to hear? Let me just, you know what? You're going to like this. Okay. You're going to like this. I, I, I bet I can predict the ones they predict where we totally failed. And but, it will have to do with the quality of Windows 10 updates. Yeah, but, well, I don't think you may mention that at all. Windows okay. 10 usage should surpass that of Windows 7. Boom. Mm. VR for Xbox One. Okay, no. But everybody thought that would happen. Yep. Microsoft 365 for individuals. There yeah, it is, the consumer system. subscription. Still coming, but it'll come. Windows 10 S. No Andromeda tablet. You're 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 batting almost a thousand here. <laughs> All hands on Teams, full steam ahead. Right? Yep. It yep. Huge. Microsoft continues to chip away at integrating LinkedIn, slow and steady. I would agree. Uh that's a kind of subjective, but I think that's exactly what's happened. Mm -hmm. uh, AI washing of everything and anything continues. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, FPGA access opened up in Azure. Yes, right? Yep. yep. Outlook.com beta, the calendar and people. Did they add calendar and people to Outlook.com? They did. They added Microsoft to do as well. Yeah. And Windows as a service formally extend the support time frame for businesses only. Mary Jo Foley oh, says, I based on Chris Capp's recent answer to us on the show, doubtful. And let's see, did they extend the, I think they did once in 2018, extend the support lifecycle. Yeah, they life did. Cycle. They did. Yep. Yeah. You missed one VR for Xbox One is the yeah. only one you missed. And I, I would good. say on VR and X, you know, they were working on this. I mean. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I oh, think yeah. that the, the market acceptance of Windows Mixed Reality was such that they said, you know, we don't really. Yeah. This mm -hmm. is just going to be another. They were working on it like everybody else. And I bet you a lot of companies said, mm, maybe yeah. not. Mm -hmm. So very good. So that's just to give you an okay. idea of how accurate. Now that was a one list for all. <laughs> mm -hmm. You combined yeah. your lists. Here you're you maybe a little less confident, yeah. so you're you know it's very, <laughs> a little I less like prepared. Nah, I feel no. I feel like we kind of have almost the same list in a way, just. 
phrased differently. They're definitely complimentary these. items for yeah. sure. And I don't, it's not like I look at Mary Jo's list and no, think, No, it's nope. interesting, actually. Yeah. She doesn't know what she's talking about. <laughs> that woman's crazy. <laughs> 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 you know, like these, it's a good list, you know. Yeah. 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 So who's next? I forgot. I've lost track. Is it your turn, Mary Jo? Well, the next one um, that we're going to talk about, we both agree is a big topic for this year, which is quality of Windows 10 updates. And yeah. my prediction is they've got to do something. And they got to do something more than these blog posts that they've been doing saying, hey, our quality is awesome and we do a lot of things about quality. They've got to make, they've got to do something to show that they realize there is a problem. And I think they are going to, they signaled this a little bit in the first blog post that they did about quality. They said, you know, we get all these great tools and we know how to do quality, but we have some new innovations around quality coming. And I think it's going to be this year. We well, don't know listen. what they are, but... <laughs> We want yeah, to hear I, them. Um, <laughs> this is the, was my number one topic um, from last year as far as the, the most important story, I think. And it was the fact that those two feature updates both were disastrous uh, from a quality standpoint. As, and by quality means a bunch of different things. Not so much the quality of the product, meaning the contents of Windows 10 version, whatever. Yeah. But rather the quality of the update that they're delivering to people to get them to upgrade to that version of Windows 10. Huge problems in the process. Um, and you know, when I look to 2019, I, I, this is, you know, it's like the bad beef at Jack in the box. Like it's, it's going to go fine this year, honestly. Right. Because <laughs> last year was such a disaster that they can't not, you know, do better in a way. And I, they will try to obviously, um, and on the good news front, uh, having evaluated, uh, a, all of the blog posts that Microsoft wrote about this next version of windows 10, having installed it now and looked at the ones I can look at. Um, I, I, I see some addressing of this issue I've had for many years, the finish the job thing where yeah. they're, they're, they're working on the fit and finish of the product and they've been doing it for the past three feature updates and it's starting to come together. And I, 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 I do think that's nice, but, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, I don't think, well, I know we could probably withstand anything at this point, but it, it's, it would, I can't imagine them doing, having a third major feature update issue in a row, he no. says confidently. And, no, well, you know, Chris Cap said in, in those, those weekly senior leadership team meetings they have, this has come up, obviously. And yeah. when, once the senior leadership team is all over this, it's like, guys, fix this, right? Like, it's not going to, it's not going to just be, oh, it was okay. I mean, if Satya Nadella and the rest of the team, the CFO, everybody starts hearing about this, you can bet something has to give. And it can't just be lip service. It has to be some real change yeah. in the way they're doing it. I mean, a, a year ago, looking back at the two releases that had happened in 2017, I guess, we we had a completely different story. Yeah. Those releases deployed faster than ever, mm -hmm. uh, successfully, without any major issues. It was kind of incredible. And for people like me who have been critical of Windows as a service, and it was kind of like, you know, it kind of shut me up there a little bit. But this past year has kind of reaffirmed my belief <laughs> that this is untenable. <laughs> and um, I can't. I, I don't, don't think know. they're going to go. I don't think they're going to go to once a year updates, though. Like when we you yeah. I think it was you who asked Chris that um, he kind of was like, eh, no, not really. So I, I don't think they're going to go that way. There, and the reason I bet it has something to do with Microsoft 365, I, I think. Yeah. One of the things that they've done artificially is try to align the different parts of Microsoft 365 in various ways. And one of them is this update cadence. It's yeah. it's different for Office 365, which is also part of Microsoft 365, in that they're actually releasing major new features every month. Um, it depends on the month where those features go. Sometimes it's the web. Sometimes it's the desktop app. Sometimes it's the mobile apps, whatever. And... I find that to be a little complex, but it does seem like it works. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Windows only gets two major feature updates a year. I don't think it works, you know. Yeah. I think it's too much. And I think I, I think it should be different for each product based on the needs of the product. Mm. So you well, told do. Chris this. I don't know who else you can yeah. tell, right? I mean, we've all, I think we've all written yeah. many blog posts right. about, I mean, we've done video 
on ZDNet, we've done these video series where we're talking about what could they do if they wanted to fix things. I mean, you know, we have ideas. I'm not saying they should take our ideas, but. Um, you know what? I, I obviously like you, you know, you, you kind of have a, you have an opinion. One has an opinion about this stuff and because of what we do for a living, we can write about it or we can talk yeah. about it on a podcast or whatever. But, you know, I'm not really sure it's my responsibility or our responsibility to to give them the, these ideas, right? I mean, <laughs> it, it's not just that I, I don't just exist to complain, but I mean, I think just accurately pointing out what's wrong with the current system, right, should trigger right. smarter minds than mine working on this problem within <laughs> Microsoft. Well, I think you know, the I, other I, thing I, that's important is maybe not to give them the solution, but to point out that it is not intractable. You know, that they right. can't just say, no, there's no solution. We tried. Right. This yeah, is yeah. Be this, right, way. Right. this is it. No, you don't understand. We it, it, it gets updated every, you know twice a year. Yeah. No, you don't we understand. You invented do. that schedule. <laughs> we fixed That's it. That's just made up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you so can do I it think however it, you want. Even if your solution isn't the one they choose, it, right. it is kind of if you're going to say this is broken, it's incumbent on you a little bit to say we think there's solutions out there. Maybe it's going to come from, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, some perfect. brilliant systems guy. I mean, it's a systems mm -hmm. problem, I think, but. Mm -hmm. Well, it's like the um, the Intel Spectre and Meltdown stuff. Remember when that first happened? One of the big bits of bad news was your computer's going to get slower. Yeah, it, there is mm -hmm. just something about the fix that you know slows down the. Well, it has to do with the what do they call it? Um, prediction, um, random prediction, or whatever technology is built in the chips. Like, speculative. Thank you. <laughs> uh, they had to disable that or change the way that works. It made it slower. You know, mm -hmm. but I always said, you know, from day one, I, I thought, you know. This is computer science. They're they're gonna they had gone full speed down this tunnel in this one direction because everything worked, but once it doesn't work and you have to take a step back, we'll find a way. You know, some, not we, you and me, but I mean, you know, engineers at Intel and or Microsoft and the other platform makers, there'll be some software based algorithmic solution to this. And there was a hint of that mid year, I think, uh, or maybe toward the end of the year, someone from Microsoft posted about how they had overcome this. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if this ever made it into the product or if it's something that happens in the future or there's more work to be done. But I do think that kind of thing gets solved, right? Now, I didn't have to come up with a solution. I don't know how chips work. I don't, you know, I right. don't have any, right. I don't have anything to mm -hmm. offer there, you know. And you know, that's a case where they could say, yeah, we looked at it. There's really nothing we can do. Mm -hmm. But uh, Yeah, we're screwed. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I... I, I I do think, and, and you know, by the way, the mitigations for Spectre and Meltdown have gotten better. Yeah. Uh, and Intel has come up with some, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and that was another thing I we talked about early on. You know, they'll fix it. It'll be terrible. They'll fix the fix. It'll be slightly less terrible. And yeah, then over time, yeah, yeah. combined with advances in chip technology, because they'll just get faster, you know, on their own right, um, you know, eventually, you know, it's fine. Yeah. Uh, it's a little more difficult to solve a problem like, you know, how do you solve a problem like Bugs and stuff. But, <laughs> well, sure. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, but it seems to me that there's nobody more expert than Microsoft on their system. And there's plenty of people they can call on who are expert mm -hmm. in best practices in software development, even in a right. massive system like that. I doubt there are many systems as big as Windows, but mm -hmm. there's got to be people out there with expert more expertise than, than us. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah. I think, you know, uh, without having any insight into how these systems actually work, it was very clear with the Windows 10 stuff that their processes were broken. Because, you know, it's an embarrassing reality that all of the problems that surfaced later when this thing went public had surfaced earlier when they were testing mm -hmm. it. There was not a single example of a problem that they hadn't caught earlier. They just didn't triage it correctly. Yeah. Mm. So, you know, this is in some ways not even a technology problem. It's a process problem. Yeah. And I mean, the, and the answer might be as simple as, well, don't do two updates a year. <laughs> Thank you, Leo. I agree with that completely. <laughs> yep. And they, they seem. Yep. They're hell that, meant that to do it. You know what? I'm going to take a step back from what I said earlier and say, I think we can solve this problem. <laughs> Yeah. No, you know, I mean, for for a big part of the audience, they have solved this problem. They let enterprise customers delay updates up to thirty months, right? Right. Yeah. I uh, mean, so which would yes. be prudent at this point, right? So mm -hmm. the people who this is not solved for are people who are running Windows Ten Home. 
Right. Because oh, they have to take it. Yeah. We can't defer that's at right. all. Yeah. Is that right. what percentage of uh, Windows 10 users are home users? That's a good question. I don't know if we know yeah, that it number. Is no, but it's if gotta you, be uh, half, so, right? It's got to be. I mean, that's no, the, it, it, no, no, it's not going to be half because I think it's smaller. Oh, yeah. If right. you accept, uh, that we, let's just pretend that half of all Windows users are business and half are consumers. Then only some percentage of the half could be home. Right. Um, right. The difference between pro and uh, enterprise almost doesn't matter for the purposes of this discussion. So you don't have to worry about that. A lot of machines are sold with home, though. They are. Yep. And I think I a lot bet. of users, including me, didn't really pay attention when we bought our machine. And yeah, we're a little sure. surprised to find, uh, let me just look at the, see if this one's home. I bet it's as many as two-thirds of the consumer PCs are home. Yeah, I'm home. Maybe. So this is a Lenovo 470S. This is a business machine yeah. running With Windows Home. home. And I mean, I yeah. I didn't wasn't yeah. smart enough to, to pay the extra 60 bucks and get uh, Pro. But if, so, but if you're in an enterprise, a lot of them but, just have blanket yeah, they're licenses Pro, and they're just like, that. okay, upgrade everybody yeah. to Pro. So you're right. So half if half is enterprise, which is probably the case. That They're on pro or enterprise. Yeah, yeah. I would say so. Let's say it's two thirds of half. I mean, so there are seven hundred million. There are three hundred, whatever. Two thirds of, of three hundred fifty. Yeah. yeah, and there's a ton of million. Those, but those those people are part of the test program, right? Like we we Which joke about cool. it, but it's true. I, no, it's, <laughs> I don't joke about this. This is not okay. I mean, um, any you know one new, of us who is a home user, you 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 go seek an update and you get Windows ten. Boom, like you get the feature yeah. update. That's they, that, they've, you're um, the you're the front line of testing for them, and that's not that's not no that's not who you want. I, I you know <laughs> you don't I don't want my mom. You don't want me. I don't want I don't, <laughs> no you you want you don't want normal people beta testing against their knowledge. Um, I mean we're not we're not really like beta testers. I feel like there's the canary ring and all these other rings, right? Release preview ring, blah blah blah. But we're the ones who. After all, it's gone through all the test rings, then they push it out to the regular users, and then it's like, okay, let's see if who screams first and loudest, right? What didn't work? <laughs> Squeeze it till it squeaks. Yeah. It's just not a. It's not a good idea. It's too bad. Is that? Squeeze it till it squeaks. Is that actually a term people <laughs> use, or did you just make that up? I like I it. Just, I just made it up. I'm. I'm writing that. There's down. something. <laughs> horribly wrong with my mind. <laughs> uh, you can tell what he's been doing to his pets over the holiday. Let's <laughs> I, right. I have to be really right. careful because uh, we do an ad for a sponsor that, you know, it's a sing that we, this is a single vendor solution. And I keep, I really want to say one throat to choke, but I don't right. dare yes. do that. Yes. Probably not in an ad. Who, who said, was that Chris <laughs> Capasol who said that? Or was, who said that? No, I'm sure that, it's a business term people use. No, no so but that came up on a podcast. Yeah, no, I, I use it a lot. Like, that's kind of a it's business a great, thing. Joke. It's a great line. That's yeah, it means, stuff. you know, one vendor, you can go to one vendor for all the yeah. issues you're having with your hardware, software, and yeah. services. I want to, I mean, it's actually the right sentence but i don't think the sponsor would appreciate it Probably you, you must run into this like, so I, like for me like i'm the one throat to choke at my site right so yeah because my name's on the site so right. people email me about like customer support questions that i can't help them with or i got an email from someone who wanted a copy of his bill and i'm like i i, I don't <laughs> that's Paul, 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 can i have a copy of my bill <laughs> no, like I, 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 but it's understandable in oh, a yeah, way yeah, why yeah. they would ask me this. I've got it completely the opposite way. Nobody asks me for anything anymore. That's so good. Doing That's I think, lucky. Right? Well, I think they've decided Leo clearly has no responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> I try to be as clueless as possible. It just doesn't seem to work. <laughs> it's also why Lisa won't let me do the laundry anymore. It's just right. A little household household tip: put in the reds with the whites. You'll never have to do the laundry again. again. <laughs> yep. mm, problem solved. Although you will have to wear pink shorts for a while. It's all right. We've, um, all, as, we've all made this kind of yes, decision. We've all, made, we've all squeezed it till it squeaks, <laughs> as you as you might say, as one might say. Right. How do I get this back on track? <laughs> Help me. Let's talk about hardware. Sure. Okay. Yeah. I like hardware. Yeah. So, uh, 2019... Of course, there will be some new Surface devices. I have a prediction. We'll have yes. yet another host for this week in computer hardware. 
<laughs> I don't know what happened. So Ryan Shroud, as oh, you yeah. know, got a job oh, right. at yeah. Intel. So we replaced That's him right. with Alan Malventano. Alan, we love Alan. He's uh, He was mm -hmm. on This Week Computer Hardware with Patrick Norton. Mm -hmm. He got a job at Intel. <laughs> oh, man, really? Yes. Yeah. So if anyone would like a job at Intel, we're <laughs> interning now at Twit. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's just a natural progression. So, Maybe it's time to get someone from ARM. Well, what we're doing, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, no right. kidding. Then he won't get a job at Intel. That's a good point. Yeah. Uh, no, Sebastian Peake, the editor in chief of this week of uh, PC Perspective, will be joining Patrick nice. Norton as the host of this week in Computer Hard as the temporary host <laughs> until he gets a job. I yeah. asked him. I said, Sebastian, you're not looking for work at Intel. He said, No. <laughs> Just checking. <laughs> what's your 2015? What's your 2019 prediction? I don't know. Anyway, so we we have a pretty good hardware. idea on Surface because um, a friend of ours, Brad Sams wrote a book about Surface, and he had a lot of good roadmap stuff in there. Um, we we believe there'll be a new Surface Pro introduced in 2019 that I've heard, and Brad also has heard, largely redesigned, whatever that means. It could just mean rounded corners mm -hmm. and a USB-C port. It could mean something right. more than I that. I think you're talking about Chapter 13, the future depends on this. Indeed. Chapter 13, Revelations. <laughs> 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 yep. So we think yeah, there'll be um, that. Um, what else do we think in in um, hardware? We well, we know the first Surface Hub Two model, which is the one that doesn't have all the cool new stuff. Um, yeah. Surface is out. Hub One Point Five. Yeah. Uh, rumors that Centaurus, the successor to Andromeda, could be out this year. That one I give a low probability to because I think yeah. they still have to solve the idea of what would you use a third device for with a pen. Right. Um, and get a phone, what's the you, get a, you get a laptop, right? <laughs> yeah. Allow right. me to beat the dead horse for the new year. No, it's true. It's what, what do you need the third device for, even if it was the yeah. coolest thing ever and it was foldable and you could use a pen with it and you could put it in your pocket mm -hmm. if you had really big pockets. Um, <laughs> <If Tanner pants. laughs> yeah, I don't know. So Centaurus is, uh, I think Brad and others believe could be right. this year, but I, I don't know if it'll make it this year. It's called a Centaur because it's two beasts in one yeah, device. Yeah, like half man, half horse. Yeah. Is that what that Centaur is? Yeah. Um, yeah, so this is half pointless and half useless. But um, <laughs> oh, write that one. Down. I just don't. I, I don't know. I don't get it. No, it's also called Centaurus because uh, Andromeda is a galaxy and Centaurus is a galaxy. Also, yes. Oh, no. There you go. Oh. Yeah. Oh, the uh, constellations, oh. maybe, or what do you call it? Half man, half beast sounds better, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> right. Or half man, pointless, bear, half pig. useless. Yeah. Yeah. And then the other rumored thing is some kind of a speaker. Um, but don't think of it like a home speaker, I don't think. I bet it's an oh. office speaker. Damn it. I forgot don't I should have put the, I, I'll add this now. So um, here's a prediction for you for this year related to what you I just know. said. Uh, Surface earbuds. Oh. So noise canceling earbuds. So remember when they announced Surface mm -hmm. headphones, uh, part of yep. the rationale, which I just thought was crazy, was a lot of people work in these offices where it's kind of an mm -hmm. open concept deal. And they're all intermingled. They can sit wherever they want, maybe, or there are no walls. It's just, you know, short partitions yeah. or whatever. And, of course, in that situation, what you've got is people talking on the phone or talking to each other, mm -hmm. and you're trying to get work done. So everyone wears headphones. So surface headphones. I was like, yeah, okay. But yeah. Now, most people don't like giant headphones, you know, covering their ears, and <laughs> you sweat. It gets gross. And uh, I thought that earbuds would, um, would make more sense. And... Um, I am reasonably sure that's exactly what's going to happen this year. They're going to what? release Surface yeah, noise canceling earbuds. earbuds. Interesting. Yep. But do you remember those old envisioning video things they used to do where they showed the future of this and that and they had these like made up scenarios with people in the jungle showing mm -hmm. you oh, yeah. using fold it. Okay. So in one of those, there's a woman wearing an earbud. I oh. remember. Oh. oh, okay. How funny. Like and a Star she, Trek. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Language translators She's, like turned it and she could, yeah, automatic translation and other things were going on. Um, so you know, a I lot of those surface, things in there come true. Surface uh, headphones obviously could be used in a bunch of different scenarios right. or situations, but if you had to kind of pick one, I mean, I, they almost make more sense for gaming. Like, it's kind of goofy that this isn't an Xbox branded mm -hmm. thing, 
Mm-hmm. Um, but again, to go well, back to the thing I said earlier, I mean, if you travel a lot, you know, A, those things are big and heavy. Right. Um, you know, the nice, I don't have them right here, but the, you know, the little package you put in like Bose noise canceling headphones, the tiny little, mm-hmm. you know, the little earbud versions. Um, those, the, it, the ear, the uh, noise cancellation is incredible. Battery mm-hmm. life is really good. The portability is fantastic. You know, that's what I use. Those, that's the QC35s, I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, nice. Yeah. Well, when I, when I get an original tip on them working on a headset, but what I thought it meant was like a Jabra headset, you know, which again would yeah. fit in with their whole focus on work and productivity. Right, but why doesn't so, it have, why doesn't Surface have a microphone? Have a, I know. Yeah. yeah. I, that's great. what like I thought they were going to launch. Yeah. Yeah. That would make more sense. Yeah. Well, they'll do an maybe Xbox they still will. branded version of it, maybe. Maybe they will. Who knows? I think they are, well, the, the existing one should be Xbox branded. Although, to be honest, Xbox would need the headphone too. I, uh, the, um, the microphone as well. Mm-hmm. Right. It's, it's weird they don't have that. Mm-hmm. It's weird they don't sell a, as a friendly Oklahoma says, a Surface Studio monitor only solution. That's rumored yeah. though. Right. It is rumored yeah. and, uh, it's, you know, we'll see. I mean, um, I keep bringing this up because this is an example of what people want. But the HP computer I'm using now is an all-in-one design with a, kind of a flat base. It's a 4K 27-inch display. You can use it as a display. There's an HDMI in. You know, no one would buy a computer to be a display. But HP also sells a, a flat base. And you can just take the monitor off, stick it in the base, and it is a display now that hmm. you can use with any computer. How much so is it's it? kind of – I don't know how much it is, honestly. Uh, the computer itself is pretty expensive because it's kind of a high-end right. computer. But um, that kind of modular approach um, is such a great idea. And that is central to the future of – Surface Hub, which we know is going to be modular, mm-hmm. that compute device, you know, will take it from, I forget the names now, 2S to 2, whatever they, I can't yeah. remember anymore, <laughs> whatever the two versions are. <laughs> but Surface Studio will have the same modular design as well. Mm-hmm. And that will be a display you can take forward and replace the innards with a new computer. Yeah. Hmm. But we don't, we I don't, don't know, know when, right, maybe this year or 2020. Like a, a lot of times hardware stuff seems yeah. to, come about later yep right and surface hardware releases are not particularly quick right you know so for example they, one thing I mean, i'm wondering yeah about, they have to get the chip right the special chips that they want and a lot of times they haven't been first in line to get them because it's based be on first volume. In line anymore based on yeah. surface pro 4 and surface book you know right um surface go 2 i don't actually expect to see that in 2019 <laughs> to be honest Me uh, unless they announce it really right at the end of the year. Um, that said, I, it would behoove them, I think, to move quickly on that because I think the current one is a little too underpowered and could be improved dramatically. And mm-hmm. regardless of which direction they go, um, I'm sorry, regardless of the timing, rather, I think the direction they should go with the next one is with Qualcomm. Mm. You know, And this might actually be an interesting computer, even right now, for if it wasn't for the compatibility stuff, perhaps uh, to go even yeah. with the 850, right? Which is the lower end one. It will be soon. Um, I bet it's pretty comparable, you know, mm. performance wise. And I think it's that would get 22 hours of battery life. Mm, that'd be amazing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm getting about right now with the go probably like four hours. Yeah. That's brutal. That's, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Because you give up so much with the go. It should at least have great battery life. Yeah, it should have something, you know, like yeah. well, it has yeah. portability, but know. you know, the, portability. You, right? It's you cute. sacrifice, you it's know, cute. performance <laughs> or battery. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, it looks like a uh, like a Raspberry Pi case, <laughs> you know, like yeah. something you just put around a little tiny computer. Yeah. Uh, okay, okay, these are good. I like these predictions. I'm saving these for next year. Okay. Mm. Well, oh, oh this, we didn't oh, talk just about one, one more though. Ones. Yes. Hololens. Oh, yeah. I guess then two more because there are actually mm-hmm. two more hard, hardware things. So um, we think the new Hololens, which I don't know if they'll call it two Hololens two or not. Technically, the two, there was a two that got canceled, and this would be three if they were really being honest. But since they didn't bring two to market, maybe this will be two. I think it'll be out this year. Um, Brad, I think said in in the first half. I don't know if it'll be the first half or not. Um, but one thing I'm pretty sure is this is going to be a business device. 
when they first de debuted the original HoloLens, they kind of showed some business stuff off to the side, but they really focused it on consumer scenarios. I think this will be the complete reverse with this device. Um, this is going to be a business device. They've already set this up. They're, all the new apps they're building for HoloLens are coming out of the Dynamics team, you know, the team that does ERP and CRM. So I think this will be a business device. Uh, we know there's going to be an AI chip on board for processing AI workloads at the edge, that, which doesn't mean it has to be a business device, but I, I strongly think it will be. And it's supposed to be lighter, have better battery life, uh, more portable. I don't know if it'll look all that different, if it'll still kind of look like these ungainly goggle type things or if it'll be much more streamlined. I'm not sure. But we haven't seen any prototypes of this yet. Maybe, I don't know if we'll see it at CES, but maybe shortly thereafter we'll start seeing something. Yeah. Maybe uh, maybe build, although that seems a little late. Seems late. Maybe uh, Mobile World Congress. I'm curious if uh, one thing I'll be watching for, I guess, when this, whenever this is announced or however they do it, is if and how they mention Windows Mixed Reality. Right. Uh, because when the first HoloLens came out, this didn't exist. And mm -hmm. mi Windows Mixed Reality is a consumer focused way to get some of these technologies going at home. Um, will they update that platform to address maybe some new features from HoloLens 2? Do they ignore yeah. it? Is it just kind of dead in the water? I'm, I'm curious to see. What, if anything, they say about that at that time? Yeah. And then what was then, yours? Yeah, so the other boat is the Xbox One, right? So mm. uh, this generation of consoles has been very interesting for a number of reasons. Um, I would, with Sony and Microsoft in particular, really scrambling the traditional schedule for how consoles are released and what they are, you know. And um, there's always been cost-reduced versions of consoles that come in, you know, two or three of them in the lifetime of a, of a console. But we've already had uh, two machines that improve on the capabilities of the original. They're not just cost-reduced, although they are in some ways cost-reduced. Um, but they actually improve on it. And they're going to keep doing that. you know. And so Microsoft is, of course, plotting to this future where games are delivered by the cloud to heterogeneous devices and so forth. But in the meantime, we still have this Xbox One platform to worry about. And there were some rumors over uh, the holidays sometime about some crazy frame rates in 4K and, you know, that's kind of nonsense. But I, I believe that the focus for the next version of Xbox One, whatever they call it, the X2 or something, um, has to be 60 frames a second 4K, you know, um, as a standard, right? Because right now uh, you have choices to make as a developer what exactly you're going to support on the Xbox One X. And most games don't support both 4K and 60 frames a second because it's just technically very challenging, unless you have a very simplistic game, in which case, what's the difference if you have 4K? Um, and so a lot, of, a lot of times you'll see uh, developers will sacrifice resolution um, to get better speed, obviously. Or the reverse, if it's a slower game, they can sacrifice performance because it doesn't matter. So I think the way that the Xbox One has to kind of go out is with this, tr like a, what I would call a true 4K console and the good news there is they're a lot closer to it than sony is and so um sony will probably do something similar but i bet they call their next thing the playstation 5 you know just to make it seem like it's something really new when in fact i bet it's just a playstation 4 pro 2 what do you think mary Jo? yeah <laughs> i disagree with you on some of the console stuff that's Those sorry. consoles, yeah, they sound big. Yeah, huge, 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 huge. huge. <laughs> I will make a prediction about consoles, and that is that Mary Jo will have an Xbox sometime in 2019. Oh, God, that would be really? so amazing. Wow, you're going out on a limb, man. You know, all he does is send you one for Christmas. That's all. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Where's your birthday again? Oh, your Worst birthday's not until like November. Yeah. Uh, November. Perfect. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Will we see a yeah, new Xbox this year? Yeah, they, yes. they always cool. launch them in November, yeah, don't they? Yeah. Like, I think the original yeah, the Xbox the launched on my birthday. In fact, just in no, time for <laughs> Christmas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, uh, that concludes the uh, predictions for 2019. Can I can I make a wrap up prediction? Yeah. Okay, 
Tie it all up with a bow. All right. So this is this is going to sound weird when I say it, but remember this throughout the year. I think Microsoft's going to get a lot quieter than they've been about new products. And I don't mean just about Windows. And the reason is, if you think about other tech companies right now who are in the news, there's a lot of news around Facebook and Amazon and Google and all the problems they've been having with privacy and facial recognition and blah, 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 right? What's Microsoft done? They've gone kind of quiet. Mm. And I think, I actually think this is a strategy. I think they're saying, you know what, let's talk instead about inclusivity and diversity and all those topics that Chris Capicello wanted to bring up last week. Mm -hmm. And let's talk less about products and technologies. We'll talk about them when there are big events like Ignite and Build, but we're not going to be the company talking about all the things we're doing. We're just going to do it and deliver it and just keep chugging along and having our stock price go through the roof. So I think uh, um, yeah. it's going to make our jobs more challenging, right? Because in the past, it just felt like we had a deluge of stuff being thrown at us. Like we get this, we get this, we get this. Now it's going to be a little harder for us to kind of unearth these new technologies and tips and things that are going on. But that'll make it fun. Well, I don't, people have to I don't listen really, to the show more. Yeah, that's right. I don't. Ha I don't think of this as a prediction, but I do think this is a moment for Microsoft to promote its privacy stuff. You know, some right. people are calling on a GDPR type thing for the United States, for example. I mean, Microsoft could kind of make the case that they're doing that type of thing already, and you know, they've made some overt uh, privacy changes to Windows 10 over the past couple of years, for example. I mean, it's almost like something they could market. You know, some people, some companies don't care about your privacy, but Microsoft does. You know, blah blah blah, whatever. Yeah, they should. Um, I mean, I think Apple's yeah, making great Apple does. hey doing it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, they they've had their own problems with telemetry, right? Like they they keep changing what they're collecting and how they're collecting. Such a mistake on their it. part. They, they really need to just. I can't be that valuable to them, or is it? I, I think know. it is. <laughs> yeah. but, valuable uh, you to know, what so quality assurance? And also how they d build products and how yeah. they update products and how they know what what needs doing. I, f I feel like they have they have their reasons for doing it, but it's like kind of a black it's been a black eye for them and they know it. And that's why they keep tweaking, you know, what what telemetry settings are there and how can you turn different things off? Why don't you make but that not, just but part they of the insiders be, program? And, and I know they, you still can't turn everything way. off. Right. Yeah. That's that's the thing that but keeps coming to, back. Let people volunteer for it as part of the insiders program. You're still mm -hmm. going to get millions of data points. You don't right. have to get everybody. You need a sampling. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. I don't know why. It'd be a good this. look. It's but I don't yeah, think it'd be a good look. It's an opportunity. It really is. Yeah. yeah. The only the only downside from a marketing perspective is that Microsoft would be fixing a problem of, of its own creation. So it's not like it could. True. <laughs> Brag about it, you know. We've been yeah, screwing you guys for years, but we fixed no, no, it. No, no, no. They can say we're doubling down. We're gonna, you know, we believe <laughs> privacy is so important that we're yeah. just gonna we're gonna make sure that you're, you know, you when you're using Windows, you're operating privately. Yeah, and, and they could mm -hmm. put, uh, I would say, put BitLocker in the home version. Right. Mm -hmm. By the way, if you're looking for a Chrome compete statement, what Leo just said is the genius yeah. Yeah. marketing point of all time. Which is some yeah. platform makers sell your privacy. Yeah, you know yeah. why a Chromebook sucks so cheap. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, honestly, that's a. It's I need doing a brave well. book with Duck Duck Go on it. <laughs> yeah. Do they have that kind of a thing? <laughs> and and also, you just you're just swimming downstream because you're going to be forced to do it. Yeah. Yep. Might as well embrace it now. I love it. I wish they would. While they're doing that, they can get rid of all the ads and the crap where, too, this thing would be perfect. We'd have nothing to talk about. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I mean, I and the good thing for them, most people who are normal users, they wouldn't even know how to turn it off, right? right. And they wouldn't know <laughs> enough to turn it off. Right. Right. But, by, but that's fine, right? I mean, the notion that your, your privacy is being protected by default. I should. Who's going to complain let about me this? point out, when you set up a new Mac, there are two or three pages saying, would you like to send information back to help us make our software better? Would you like yeah. to send anonymized information back to app developers? Mm -hmm. And you get a yes or no choice. That's all. Yeah. And that's Apple's privacy. You know, that's all you have to do. Just give sure. them a chance. Give people a, an option. 
Well, you know, that book you had earlier that was like 626 pages or whatever. Age of Surveillance that, Capitalism. Yeah, that's Microsoft's privacy policy. <laughs> and on page 17, 112, and 313, yeah. there are little options you can check. <laughs> and if you don't know exactly where those are, yep. uh, you may not find them. <laughs> Oh, wait a minute. There's Man, a chapter even, on even Facebook, Go. like trying to figure out how to shut things off on there. Yeah. And oh, every month I feel like you get a new you get oh. a new thing. Oh, you know, you need to shut this off. Well, just like off. something. <laughs> forget about <laughs> privacy. Just like I don't want videos to autoplay on my device. Yeah. Good luck finding that. It's in there. I know. You know, yeah. but it's like uh, that's just it's I almost said a centaur's maze. What's the thing that has the. That's not a centaur. The minotaur. The minotaur. The minotaur. Thank minotaur. You. The other tar. Another half, half, half beast, half, half yeah. something. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Leo, Leo's looking for the answer to I all am, it's questions. In this, it's in this book, I'm sure. There's eight, <laughs> 600 pages. Actually, I'm reading about Pokemon Go. It's in the chapter called Make Them Dance. It's the middle part of the book, just like a name of people who are related to other people, like Joshua, <laughs> son of Jossum, Actually, son of. The author of this is brilliant. Uh, she's she's mm -hmm. widely rec uh, recognized as a, as a really uh, deep thinker on this subject. So I'm looking forward to reading all 600 pages before her interview a week from Friday. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah. Yikes! Hey, well, good people luck think that. I don't do anything around here. <laughs> sure, and they're right. The first thing he did was Google whether or not there was a Cliff Notes version of the book already. <laughs> oh, I've already skimmed it. Um, let's. Uh, do you want? Oh, wait a minute. We got stuff to talk about before we take a break. We do have Just a couple a little, of late breaking some stories. News stories here. Yeah. yeah. Fire away. Uh, well, the first one is that, according to Net Market Share, which I do trust, um, Windows 10 usage has finally surpassed that of Windows 7, which you predicted um, one year ago. <laughs> yeah, so actually, the interesting thing about that bit is it, it <laughs> we were going off of the wrong numbers before, right? So mm -hmm. until roughly mid-year, a little bit before, Microsoft was quietly counting virtual machine installs of Windows what? 10 in the Windows 10 install base. Oh, come on. So, yeah, so when Terry Myerson <laughs> said that there were nearly 700 million, you know, Windows 10 and active devices, whatever it was, uh, that was inflated by some huge number. So... Mm -hmm. Sometime at, around then, they stopped counting those. Um, coincidentally, when Terry left, I don't think those were related. But um, <laughs> uh, So it took them until, what was it, October, maybe, to finally catch up to the 700 million. Mm -hmm. uh, right. So I think that explains the discrepancy. Like, I, I think, you know, if the older number had been correct, then like Windows, because we kind of have this assumption about how many new PCs are coming online every month, whatever. Um, it would have happened much earlier in the year, but I guess it did happen by the end of mm. 2018, barely. It kind of squeaked by in the last month. Yeah, the, the number we did have earlier, uh, back in October, was more than half of Windows devices in the enterprise were on Windows 10. Right. Um, so, yeah, they've, they've been, like, towards the end of the year, finally hitting that number. So, at the time when that happened, I said... Is this a is this a plus? Like, are you encouraged by this, or is this scary? Given Windows Seven extended yeah. support ends in January twenty twenty. <laughs> right, given the, the the huge yeah. number that has to still be upgraded. Right. So, yeah, that's a good question. I mean, I, I I sort of think about this from the kind of the opposite end. Like, you know, how does this compare historically, and is it good, bad, and different? Mm -hmm. You know, whatever. Windows Seven benefited from sort of an artificial bump because the reception to Windows Vista was so bad. Right. And Windows 7 wasn't really that much better than Windows Vista. It just fixed some of those problems, compatibility and performance, actually. And, um, you know, whatever. So Windows 10 in its own way has kind of benefited somewhat by how terrible Windows 8 was. But actually, the yeah. big beneficiary there was Windows 7, right? So in the mm -hmm. same way that, you know, uh, the Longhorn delays and then Vista being terrible extended the life of Windows, Windows XP... Uh, Windows 8 being so terrible absolutely extended the life of Windows 7. You know, yeah. so I guess you could argue in that case that the sl the relatively slow uptick of Windows 10 to overcome Windows 7 was due in part to the fact that a lot of people put the brakes on and said, I'm just sticking with Windows 7, mm -hmm. you know. I, I actually had um, a reader ask me today, um, 
did I think Microsoft was going to extend the life of um, Windows 7, yeah. you know, extended yeah. support. And I don't think they are because mm. I think they figured out ways to get people to pay who want Windows 7 support to continue just through both paid um, support yeah. updates and also if you buy Windows uh, Virtual Machine, what's it called? Mem Windows Virtual Managed Desktop or Windows, I can't remember the acronym for that, the new it's, Virtual Desktop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get three years of Windows 7 support uh, for free uh, beyond the 2020 date as part of that. So I think they've, they've decided there are ways you can extend it if you're an enterprise, but you're going to have to pay. Yeah, but what if you're a person? So nothing. part of the issue is, <laughs> uh, well, no, but I mean, there are some tens or hundreds of millions of people out in the world who have no in, you know, notion of ever upgrading this computer they're right. using. Yep. And on January, whatever, 2020, that thing is not going to be supported anymore. So they'll stop getting Windows updates. I assume they'll get some annoying uh, pop-ups of some kind oh. to, re, you know, to yep. beg them or whatever. <laughs> if Microsoft's smart, the way you address that market is you offer them Windows 10 for free at that point. Yeah, that would be smart. You know? That would. Yeah. Not supporting Windows 7 longer. I mean, in other words, don't, don't let them pay. Give right. them Windows don't, they, and, don't do the XP thing, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't do that. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, and then the other uh, the other one was that um, when when <laughs> whenever the October 2018 update came out or came out again, uh, I made the point. I pointed out that every release of Windows 10 before Microsoft had released this big promo video showing how much better edge battery life and isn't it was than that of Chrome. And isn't it interesting that they never did it for this release? So yeah. they never did do it for this release, but actually they did do the test and they made a post to a place no one would ever find it at. And <laughs> edge still does have a battery life advantage <laughs> over Chrome, um, which is kind of interesting. I, I, this is off the top of my head, but I believe the last time they did the test for the April update, it was a 14% advantage. This time it actually went up to 24, I think was the number. 24% mm -hmm. uh, advantage. So this will be yet another thing for us to look at when Microsoft moves Edge to Chromium. Will they be able to retain the battery life? Um, and if they do, I suspect it will be because of the close integration they'll have with the operating system, um, which I think is the real advantage of uh, mm -hmm. Edge today. Okay. You want to take a break and then uh, we'll do the back of the book? Sure. You feel good. You feel good about that? Sure. Yeah. I made a New Year's uh, resolution to uh, to post more, to blog more, to um, get off of social media. Actually, I, I'm really happy about that. That's worked out really well. And instead, put all that energy that I was putting into Twitter and Instagram and Facebook onto my WordPress blog. And I love WordPress.com. It's been great for me. I really like it. Um if you're looking to make a website, now it's not just for blogs, it's not just for personal websites, it's for business sites too. If you're looking to make a website that reflects you, your brand, your style, your personality, you've got to go to WordPress.com. I know you've been thinking, we need a better website, or maybe you're in a business that don't have a website at all. You really need a website. I went to a restaurant, brand new restaurant in Petaluma the other night, and all they had was a Yelp page. And I thought, that's fine, but really, honestly, you need your own website where you control it, where it looks like, you know, your design, your, your, you've got your menus there, you can keep them up to date. Every business ought to have its own place on the web that it can call home. That's theirs, they own. And WordPress.com is just the right place to do it. They've got great site building tools. Never cookie cutter. No, your site will not look like anybody else's. Partly because they have thousands of themes to choose from, but also because it's very easy. You don't have to be a HTML web guru to do this. It's very easy to customize it and make it fit your needs. And when they have, you know, have any questions at all, 24-7 support from real experts. WordPress.com lets anyone pursue whatever they love by launching a site. It's free to start with room to grow. I like that phrase. Free to start with room to grow. I have a business plan, which I really like at WordPress.com. That's my, uh, my, my personal blog, leolaporte.com. Uh, WordPress was created so anyone can publish their ideas. I mean, really, that's going back to the beginning in the 2000s with Matt Mullenweg, and that's when I started using it. And I love it because there's no, it's very straightforward. No two-week trials, no hidden fees. And 
really important. WordPress users own their content. You upload you know, text, photos, video, sound, whatever. It's not on somebody else's site. It's not hosted on YouTube with their branding and the risk that at any time they could pull you down for any random reason, which has happened to us. No, it's on WordPress. You own it. You can upload it and you can download it at any time. I love WordPress. You will, too. Go to WordPress.com and join the millions of people who use WordPress.com every day to turn their dreams into reality, including, by the way, I should point out, some of the biggest, the best publishing entities in the world. Go to WordPress.com slash Windows right now. You're going to get 15% off any new plan purchase. WordPress.com slash Windows. 15% off your new website. If you do not have a site, or maybe you're just unhappy with your site, or you just want to make it your New Year, New Year's resolution to to to, to do your own thing, WordPress.com slash Windows. And now here to do his own thing, Paul Thorat, <laughs> and his pick of the week, his tip My of the week, thing. your own thing. Make yeah, your own kind I'm, of music, Paul. <laughs> I have so many things. Um. I, I think I wrote this over the holidays at some point, but I, I, I actually documented the way that I set up a Windows 10 PC because I do it all the time. And I do it for review purposes because I get review laptops in, but I also do it for the, my own PCs. I, I'm always reinstalling and everything. And um, it's not possible for me to step through this entire thing here. Uh, but I did want to, just a couple of key pieces of advice for someone setting up a new Windows uh, 10 oh, that's PC. Good. That's useful. That's good. Um, do not sign into a Microsoft account during setup. Uh, create a local account or what they now call an offline account. Really? And the reason you do that is it creates a clean directory structure, which could be super important. So, for example, um, uh, if you have any commit, like I do some GitHub stuff and I want that stuff inside my user folder, there's no spaces or weird characters. Uh, it's good for OneDrive backups. It's just super smart. Just create, like in my case, I create an account called Paul. And then after everything's all set up and configured, I change it to a Microsoft account. Um, it also lets you uh, rename the PC before you connect to OneDrive, and then you get some stupid name up in OneDrive, you know, like the default PC name that might, you know, the Microsoft. I'm provides. just so, gonna erase my whole setup and start. Over. <laughs> That's so much it's better. Just, I mean, I, each of these items. I mean, there are going to be things that some people may not want to do or don't care about or whatever. But um, some of these things are just so key, and especially if you're, you know, you're building a computer or maybe even like an Intel NUC where you don't get like a the PC maker stuff built right into it. Um, it's, there's some good advice in here about, uh, how to clean up your device manager, how to make sure you get all the latest drivers from the right place. Um, just that kind of thing. So I'm going to, uh, keep finding, to fine tuning this. So I just uh, reinstalled, like I said, or re or installed 19H1 on, on some of my computers. I'm going to actually, um, restore one to like the, you know, factory using the new build and then go yeah. through this again, make sure it's I'm up to date. I'm to so, do that. That's a great idea. Yeah. So there's a bunch of this kind of stuff in there. This is good. You should keep really. And this is you should keep this up to date forever. This yeah, is, yeah, yeah, this yeah. Is yeah. Like yeah, this is literally what I do every single time. And, and like, <laughs> kind of looking at it like this, it's like, geez, there's a lot of stuff here. Like, <laughs> like it's it's, this, it's it's kind of this. I have to have premium though of Thorot.com to get this right. Yeah, but you know the way. So the way premium works though is as long as you sign on to the site, you get three premium articles a month. So okay, anyone could read this. Good. I sad though. You know what makes me sad, Paul. You posted this on Christmas Day. Oh, let me tell you why I did that, Leo. Um, <laughs> originally on Christmas Day, we were supposed to drive our children to the airport so they could go to Colorado to visit the grandparents. And then my sewer backed up and we had fecal Oi. matter coming oh. out of the, <laughs> <Yikes>. the uh, <laughs> basement. So I stayed home. Yeah, you did the smart we had thing, someone... which is immediately retreat to your office and write a blog post. <laughs> yeah, so I was I had written part of this earlier, and I was going to write part of it later, and then suddenly I had half a day to myself, so I figured, what the heck, I'll write this article. It's good. Yeah. That's basically when I post on uh, on my blog is when I'm procrastinating. I'm putting off something else that I have to do. Well, I, I, there was someone coming to the house to fix oh, it, good. so uh, I, I didn't know when they were going to be there, and now sure. I couldn't go to the airport, so whatever. Nice. Yeah, it was great. Um, this is. I'm really glad you wrote this. I, I actually, uh, I put these in my uh, pin board. These kinds of articles, how to set up your, oh. you know, this is so valuable to get the that, yeah. uh, that expertise. I, I mean, I wrote it, but I, I think it's. <laughs> I it's think it's, really it's good. a good thing. 
Yeah, I don't. I mean, I don't want to overplug it, but my God, this is like so clearly written. It's just amazing. <laughs> um, I don't. I don't. Know. I'm um, amazing. <laughs> if I do say so myself, and apparently I have to. I'm putting it um, in my pocket. Yeah, yeah. There you go. So um, it's a new month. It's a new year too. But uh, what that means is we have new games with gold uh, to deal with, and also new uh, Game Pass games to deal with. And this is an interesting month because for me personally, the it's the Xbox 360 games I want the most. I actually don't care too much about the Xbox One games this particular month. But there's a Lara Croft game. It's not one of the full-blown Tomb Raiders, but it's kind of like a, a co-op um, adventure game uh, that's available on the 360. And then at the on January 16th, Far Cry 2 is going to be available. So I'm actually I'm probably going to probably going to play that one through once that comes. I never did play Far Cry 2. That's a fun. It's a beautiful game. Yeah, and then Xbox Game Pass is interesting because I think when this first started, they would drop all the games in the beginning, but now they're dropping games throughout the month, so they've announced some, and they have different release dates, but uh, what is it? Yeah, some are coming out on the 3rd, some are coming out on the 10th, you know, but, different, but this is going to be another really good um, month for Xbox Game Pass. Um, farming, <laughs> farming Simulator 17, probably not the big one, but... Um, Ark Survival Evolved and Just Cause, for example, are both fantastic, you know, AAA titles. So uh, those are coming this month. And then, oh, my app pick is, um, I've been kind of waiting for this. You know, there were three, well, uh, there was probably one thing that was a little bit bigger than this. But uh, the Microsoft Launcher has evolved this past year to become the focus of Microsoft's cross-device, you know, strategy, integration strategy. So it has timeline support now. The most recent update added support for uh, Microsoft to do and sticky note integration in the feed, which is kind of huge. So now you have this one, you know, it's always been the Microsoft launcher, obviously, but now it's like this one central dashboard for everything Microsoft on your smartphone. So if you're kind of a windows phone, uh, former user or a Microsoft fan in general, I mean, this is, it, it's silly not to at least evaluate this launcher at this point. Um, actually, the other thing I want to mention, even though I don't have it in the notes is, I've been complaining about Skype for Windows 10 because it only has the one, it's like a one window view, you know, and there's no easy way to tab between the different uh, conversations. But actually, it, it there's a split view you can enable, and that makes each conversation window be in its own window again. So it's like a real application. So um, mm -hmm. if you've been worried about moving off of classic Skype, you know, desktop Skype, uh, at least give that a look. Uh, because if you enable uh, split view off of that little menu thing, which is called what? It's just the menu, the more menu. Um, you'll you'll get that multi window thing, like you know, like I said, like an adult application. So that's something to. It doesn't mean Skype is, t is isn't terrible, but it's a little less terrible. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't mistake. Don't Paul's, go that far. Yeah, yeah, not, yeah. Well, that's not. I'm not recommending saying. it. I'm no, just saying no. if you're stuck with it on an <laughs> island and you have nothing else to turn to. Good news. Yeah. And. Mary Jo Foley, time for your Enterprise Pick of the Week. Um, my Enterprise Pick of the Week is for people who want a lot of advanced features that are part of Microsoft 365 E5, but don't want to pay $54 per user per month. That's a lot of money. It is. But today, Microsoft announced that they're going to make available two new packages for Office 365. I'm sorry, for Microsoft 365. These are a subset of the features that can be found in E5 bundled together so that you can buy them as a separate package. One of them is called Microsoft 365 Identity and Threat Protection. This is for people who really want the advanced security features in Microsoft 365, but they don't need some of the other features that are in it. So you could get um, in this package Microsoft Threat Protection, which is Azure ATP, Windows Defender ATP, and Office 365 ATP, plus Microsoft Cloud App Security and Azure Active Directory, all bundled together in one neat package, $12 per user per mm. month. Mm. Or if you're a chief compliance officer and you say, hey, you know what I really need? I don't need all that other stuff. I need Microsoft 365 Information Protection and Compliance, which gives you Office 365 Advanced Compliance and Azure Information Protection Services, $10 per user per month. Oh, that's what I need. So this is good because sometimes you're somebody who's like, I don't need I don't need all the stuff in E5, but I want some of it. So they're giving you this option 
through these two new packages, which will be on the price list starting February 1. That's my pick. Nice. And uh, how about... If I scroll down, I'll know what you want to do next. Oh, your code name <laughs> pick of the week. Yes. So my code name pick of the week is Barry, B-A-R-I. Barry seems to be the code name for something we didn't mention when we mentioned new hardware in our predictions, but uh, Microsoft branded family of webcams. Uh, Paul wrote about this on his site and then Brad got the code name Barry. Um we think Microsoft's going to come out with a family of webcams and they're mostly for devices uh, that don't have support for Windows Hello. Uh -huh. So if you have a PC that doesn't have Hello integration in it, you could add a webcam from Microsoft and then get Hello oh, uh, cool. uh, facial recognition. That's cool. It could also work on an Xbox, I believe, according to Paul's tip. Um, <laughs> so that's kind of interesting as well, uh, given that Microsoft decided to remove Connect as an integrated part of the Xbox bundle. I was trying to figure out the connection between Barry and Aruba because Aruba is the code name for the next Surface Hub. And we think these are the webcams that Microsoft quietly showed us when they showed us a, a demo of the Surface Hub 2. So there is a place in Aruba called Cassie Barry Rock Formations. So this could be the connection of Barry to Aruba Barry and the Surface Hub 2. He keeps his yacht in Aruba, Barry. <laughs> Good old Barry. Good old Barry. <laughs> we thought we'd name uh, it after Barry. Why not? Barry, why not? <laughs> painting collection. Um, I just talked to Brad about this today. And yeah, yeah this was, yeah, Barry is the USB-C camera for you uh, surf. Right. Yeah, and then there's a consumer version for Windows 10 PCs and Xboxes. Yeah, could you? But it's for the it, Surface for Surface Hub too as well, right? Yeah, this is a good idea. It is a good idea because some, some people have a PC that doesn't have Hello support, and they really care about that. Me, I don't care about right. Hello that much, but some people really care about it. Yeah, they're starting to brand uh, Pin as a Surface Hello feature. <laughs> so <laughs> every way you sign into yeah. your computer Hello, now apparently is three six nine four. Hello. Yes. <laughs> It's amazing. That's the same combination I have in my luggage. <laughs> TSA approved. Yes. One year ago, this time I was uh, sailing on a catamaran in the uh, beautiful Bahamas. Mm -hmm. No, actually, it was uh, the Caribbean, the British Virgin Island. I didn't know where I was. And our captain's name was Jelly. <laughs> and apparently... They've named a beer after him. Yep. Mary Jo Foley's um, Beer of the Week. That was a long way so, around to get to that. So. Um, I lately have been having these beers at different places that are made to taste like peanut butter and jelly. Oh, I'm not even yuck. kidding. No, it's delicious, though. <laughs> um, mm. The latest one I had is from Burlington Beer in Vermont, and it's called Chunky and Jelly. And so if you like peanut butter porters, which is a thing, and I really love them, <laughs> they add something mm -hmm. else to it, not jelly, but some other, I don't know how they're adding it, taste that tastes like jelly. So you, when you drink this beer, the first sip you have tastes like peanut butter. And then when you breathe out, it tastes like jelly. I'm not making this up. It's real. And it's so crazy good if you if you are somebody who's into trying these kind of one-off innovative beers. Yeah, although I find it interesting that they are advertising waterproof pants next, yep. <laughs> next to the beer. You may also we won't, we won't analyze so why. <laughs> Is this untapped? Wow. Yeah. No, beer advocate. Beer I advocate. Mm -hmm. yep. yeah. Know your audience. Yeah, waterproof well, pants. Well, is there like a bib <laughs> being advertised as well? Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I I think, you you know, some people are just grossed out by this idea, but I, if, you, if you've you ever know, had a peanut, peanut butter, butter and jelly, not waterproof pants. Exactly. Yeah. It is. It, does oh, yeah. it taste peanutty? Yes, very peanutty. Very. So and so, the what, way what they if do you that like chunky sometimes. Style? Do they have? <laughs> uh, then you might have a problem. It's not chunky, um, but oh, they use pe like dried peanuts or peanut powder um, in making the beer in some cases, and it gives it the true peanut butter taste. I guess as a porter, that's not a bad. It's not bad. Be, it wouldn't be a bad combination. <laughs> no, it's it's fun to try it and. Uh, one place I know in New York was making peanut butter, 
bacon and jelly sandwiches to go with these Ooh. beers. Now I'd go go for the sandwich, stay for the beer. Yeah. Or is it go for the beer, stay for the sandwich? Either way. Exactly. Yeah. They were paired, you know, and it was an interesting pairing. It sounds good. I'm going. I'm going back on my keto diet for January, <laughs> and um, <laughs> uh, I'm going to have to start doing my absolute flavored vodka of the week because that's the only thing I can drink. Oh God. I'm so oh, sorry. Man. Really. You could drink, drink the cognac we had on Twit on uh, our New Year's or Christmas Eve Twit. You can have <laughs> cognac, sure. can't you? Yeah, I could have whiskey yeah. and scotch. We had we had yeah. some very nice. I think you would like this Louis the Thirteenth cognac. It's quite good, and we didn't finish it off. I thought for sure Dvorak would finish it off. <laughs> but, but uh, classic Dvorak. Well, he, he even with a, in a nod to his former self pretended to take the bottle, but he didn't. He didn't. So I still have some. Oh. Ne next time you're in town, <laughs> I think you'll like it. Warms you up throughout your body. Ladies and gentlemen, I am warmed by the fact that we have begun a brand new year and Windows Weekly is back and it's just as good as ever. Thanks to our hosts here. Paul Therott from Therott.com. Yeah, not raise the bar in the slightest. Just as good. <laughs> not a bit better. Just as good I'm as ever. reasonably sure we're just replaying an episode from last year. <laughs> no, no. It's better than ever. <laughs> and uh, all you got to do is uh, tune in every Wednesday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, that would be 1900 UTC. You'll catch Paul Therott in his native element. He's at Therott's. Chromium. Chromium. <laughs> Vanadium. <laughs> Beryllium. Uh, T H U R R O T T dot com. His books are also at leanpub.com. That's where you'll get the field guide to Windows 10. Awesome book. Uh, we also have Mary Jo Foley, of course, every week. She gives us the uh, enterprise angle on everything, and that's she's at allaboutmicrosoft.com, her ZDNet site. And we thank you for uh, being here and for coming back for another great year of Windows Weekly. Uh, if you don't happen to listen live, and the live stream, by the way, is at twit.tv slash live. You can listen or uh, watch live. Uh, if you do that, be uh, in the chat room, irc.twit.tv. You can join the kids who are watching live all together. Or get on-demand versions at twit.tv slash windows. Or subscribe, most importantly, in your favorite podcatcher. This is the year to subscribe to all your favorite podcasts. Oh, you know, could I um, just mention something real quick yes. that I kind of forgot about? Certainly. Um, when Chris Capicella was on, he offered a bunch of stuff to give away. Oh, yes. We forgot to right? mention so, that. Yeah. Yeah, so thanks again to Chris for that. I, just to provide an update for people, um, I gave away uh, 10 of the codes, so five each of uh, Xbox Game Pass and Office 365 Home. It seems forever ago now. I, the Friday before Christmas, like 10 days ago-ish, uh, that's when that happened. Um, I haven't gotten the hardware yet, but that could be coming any day. And so once that does arrive, I'll have an announcement on the site about that. And then we'll be doing the other 10 code giveaway on Friday um, at nice. 1 p.m. on the site. So I just uh, so people didn't think that this had dropped off the face of the earth. So we did do some of it. Some of it's coming this week, um, and then some of it we're waiting on Microsoft. Very nice. Very nice. Thank you, uh, Paul. Thank you, Mary Jo. Thanks to all of you for joining us, and we will be back here next Wednesday for Windows Weekly. See you then. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>